Panginoon, salamat po sa hapon po na binigyan mo muli kami ng pribilehyo upang ikaw ay pagiging at nawa na rin. Lord, bago kami tuloy ang mga pagkakas na naharapan, dalangin namin pakalinisin mo nga po kami at pakabukusan yung banal na dugo upang kami ay maging karapat dapat na pumulit mo sa mamba sa iyong harapan ng Diyos. Salamat sa kapatawaran ito. Maging sa iyong lingkod na gagamitin, ibuos mo ang iyong dakilang kapangyarihan, ang malakas na pagkilos at paggalaw na iyong santong espiritu sa kanyang buhay. At sa bawat makikinig manunod, hindi lamang sa bansa ito, maging sa ibang bansa, ay abutin, Panginoon, ng iyong dakilang kapangyarihan. Salamat din at pakasilyuan mo ng iyong banal na dugo ang lugar na to upang walang pandaray at panlilin lang ng kaaway na mangyari at magana po Diyos. Salamat sa iyo lamang namin ibinabalik ang mataas na papurit pa sa salamat sa pangalan ng iyong bugtong na anak na si Jesus, naming tagapagligtas. Amen. Praise God, we come to you in the love of Jesus Christ, hoping and praying that you are all well and good. Kami po ay uh, dumarating muli sa inyo sa pag-ibig at biyaya ng Panginoon. Umaasang kayo po ay nasa mabuting kalalagayan. Kaya naman po muli isa pong mapagpalang linggo sa ating lahat. A blessed Sunday to everyone. Praise God. And... Uh, Today we are going to learn another Bible character which is uh, very inspiring. I know that we will learn a lot from this man who is uh, found in the Old Testament and uh, his account is found in the book of 2 Kings. Kayo po ay makipagbukas sa akin sa aklat po ng Ikalawang hari, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. And let me read. Now, Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master, and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now, bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See? how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. 5 verse 8, When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him the message, Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. 
But Naaman went angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and he became clean like that of a young boy. Praise God. Let's just stop for now in verse 14. And as we have seen the story of Naaman, as a backgrounder, he is a commander in the Syrian army. The Bible says he is a man of great stature. He was highly regarded, says verse 1, because he had brought victory to the army of the Syrians. He was close to the king because he was a right hand, a commander in the Syrian army. So in other words, Naaman was a heathen. Hindi po siya Israelite. He is not uh, part of the people of God. And in terms of his resume, his qualifications, his character, he was almost perfect. He was powerful. He was popular. He was a man of great honor. He was regarded with respect among his peers and among his constituents. He was a valiant soldier, the Bible said. Seems perfect. Diba? Parang perfecto na. Wala ka nang hahanapin pa. But no matter how perfect you are, there will always be something that will blemish your spotless qualification and in the case of Naaman he was perfect in stature he was perfect in uh, in uh, popularity and fame and power but he has leprosy he was a leper sa panahon po natin ngayon ang tawag dito po ay ketong at ang ketong po or leprosy is incurable medicine has not yet discovered the cure for leprosy. So if you are a leper, you are a leper for life. You live with it. You live with the disease. You live with the pain. You live with the shame as well. Because being covered with the sores and wounds all over your body, you might not be able to go out. Diba? Hindi ka makakalabas. Uh, dagdag na doon yung uh, hiya mo, yung kahihiyan mo bilang isang ketongin. Kaya nga po, uh, marami po na may sakit nito ay uh, nasa isang uh, leprosy center. Because aside from the pain, the physical pain that this disease gives people, there is also the emotional shame, the emotional pain and social shame. Because uh, uh, this disease covers your body. It covers all over your body. But the Bible says Naaman, even though he was a leper, he had leprosy. People respected him. Gave him the respect that, due, that was due him. Amen? Pero bilang isang taong mataas ang katungkulan, gusto naman sana niya na maging... Uh, maganda at ganap yung kanyang uh, katauhan at yung kanyang isang uh, uh, kakulangan yung kanyang isang weakness that is being a man inflicted with leprosy it was hopeless it was incurable but let us go to verse 2 it says now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken a captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. So, 
As a backgrounder, Syrians and Israelites are mortal enemies. Sa kanilang kasaysayan, sila ay laging nagigera at nagaaway. They are not in good relationship. And so one day, the Syrians went and attacked the Israelites and they have taken with them captives to, the, to their homelands. And uh, in verse 2, it says, A young girl from Israel was taken captive by Naaman. And this young girl from Israel, she made her into her mistress's servant. Siya po ay naging alipin, tagapag, uh, tagapagsilbi sa court ng kanyang asawa. So, ang batang ito, bata, the young girl, sabi ng Bible, she's not a woman. Bata, kagaya mo, just kagaya mo. Iksi, ang batang ito ay bata nga. It's, she's a young girl. Amen? At noon pong siya ay uh, uh, dinescribe ng Bible, she was a servant. She was a servant to Naaman's wife. Siya ay tagapagsilbi, tagapaglingkod. Sabihin na nating alipin. Pero siya ay Israelita. At sa verse 3, this young girl said, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of leprosy. Itong batang ito ay into exile. Siya ay alipin. But she never forgot her identity. Hindi niya kinalimutan na siya ay Israelita, na siya ay pinili ng Diyos, na siya ay anak ng Diyos, na bagamat siya ay bata, alam niya yung kanyang katatayuan, yung kanyang kalalagayan. At hindi siya nanahimik. Sapagkat nakikita niya marahil, sapagkat siya ay nakatira, she lives in Naaman's household. And this young girl must have seen the misery of this, of this uh, man, Naaman. And uh, as a result of that, this young girl spoke. Nagsalita. Hindi siya nanahimik. Amen? Despite her youth. Despite her being a young girl, despite her being a slave, a servant, she knew that it is in her hands. Nasa kamay niya ang susi ng uh, solusyon, ng problema ng kanyang amo. Because even though Naaman was a Syrian, he was a heathen, he was a man of character, he was a good man. Amen? And so this young girl was sympathetic to her master to Naaman. At siya po ay nagkaroon ng, ng simpatya, nagkaroon ng awa, nagkaroon ng habag, sapagkat marahil nakita niya ang misery ng kanyang amo. Marahil nakikita niya sa gabi ito ay umiiyak sa sakit. Marahil nakita niya na ang, ang kanyang amo si Naaman ay uh, punong-puno ng kahihiyan na halos ayaw nang lumabas ng bahay. That uh, her confidence is totally to the lowest level because of her of his leprosy. Siya po ay uh, kineketong buong katauhan niya. From head to toe, he was full of wounds and boils. And uh, it, it is not a good sign. So, this young girl was not, hindi po siya napigilan magsalita. Sapagkat alam niyang, na alam niya ang susi ng problema ng kanyang among sinaman. At isang araw, siya nga po ay nagsalita. Ang sabi niya, kung pupunta lamang ang aking mahal na, na master sa lugar ng Samaria, sapagkat doon ay may isang propeta, ang pangalan ay Elisha. Gagaling siya. Gagaling siya. Wow, this is a young girl. Bata po ito, kagaya nyo. Amen? Hindi po siya napigilan. Kaya wag mong tingnan ang sarili mo na bata lang. Wag mong tingnan ang sarili mo na wala kang magagawa. Wag mong tingnan ang sarili mo na ikaw ay isang alipin lang, na wala kang kakayanan. Because God has put you there for a purpose. This young girl was a servant. She was put into exile in Syria. Mula sa Israel, siya po ay uh, kinuha at naging alipin doon sa Syria. Pero hindi po nagmukmuk ang batang ito. Hindi po siya nagtampo o nagalit sa Diyos. Hindi po siya nagkaroon ng self-pity. Na sinabi niyang ako ay nasa isang bansang banyaga at ako ay isang alipin. Kawawa naman ako. 
Pero sa kanyang kalalagayan, in the midst of her captivity, in the midst of her exile, she did not lose of her calling. She did not lose of her identity. She said, I am a, I am a child of God. And wherever I am, I will do my purpose. And she said, and she spoke. Amen? Hindi niya tinignan yung kanyang kabataan. Hindi niya tinignan yung kanyang pagiging alipin, yung kanyang estado sa buhay. Basta't ang alam niya, kailangan niyang magsalita sapagkat nasa bibig niya ang susi ng uh, himala, na ang susi ng uh, kalayaan ng kanyang uh, among sinaaman. Amen? At, and what did she do? Did she keep silent? Did she shut her mouth up? No, she didn't. She spoke. Amen? She declared. She gave the solution. Amen? At sa atin pong kalalagayan, sa atin pong mga buhay, we have the key to the salvation of the souls of many. And we, just like this younger, wherever we are sent by our destiny, we should not lose sight of the fact that we are God's messengers, that we are God's chosen, that we are God's people. And so we have the power if we only realize that, if we don't shut our mouth up. And this young girl, young as he is, sabi ko nga, siya ay kabataan, hindi po niya tiningnan yung kanyang kabataan, tiningnan niya yung kanyang magagawa. At uh, ang ginawa lang niya ay nagsalita. Sabi niya, may kilala akong propeta. Amen? Hindi pa nga siya, hindi siya ang, 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 ang susi, kundi meron lang siyang kilala. At yung kilala niya ay si... Sino po yung pinag-aralan natin nung nakaraan? Si Elisha, the great prophet who received the double portion of the anointing of the great prophet Elijah, the man who received the double portion. And indeed, Elisha was, you know, his name was becoming more and more popular because indeed he was making great wonders and miracles just like his mentor, Elijah. When Elijah was taken up into heaven, God said, uh, the, he asked uh, his uh, protege, Elisha, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? And Elisha said, I want the double portion of your anointing. Amen. And he did. He, he was able to receive the double portion of God's anointing. And uh, so, si Elijah po, gumawa ng walong himala. Si Elisha gumawa ng labing anim na himala, dinoble ng Diyos. At rema yung sinabi ng lingkod ng Diyos kaninang umaga. It was such a very powerful revelation. We are not living in the Old Testament wherein we will only partake of the double portion of God's anointing. We are living in the ending part of God's dispensation. That is the last of the last days. And God will not just pour out a double portion, brethren. He will pour out an unlimited portion of God's great blessing and anointing. Amen? Amen. And we should be excited about that. Huwag po natin sabihin kung tayo po ay mga traditionalist at sasabihin natin na, ay hindi na yan, hindi na yan panahon ng Himala, hindi na ito ang panahon ng pagpapala at blessing. Noon lang yung unang panahon, ng Old Testament, ng New Testament, ng panahon ng mga apostol. Pero sa panahon natin ngayon, wala nang Himala. I don't know with you, but what I know is that God's Word never changes. It is powerful. It is unchanging. It is invincible. And it continues to manifest its power and wonders and miracles even in the last days. And praise God because we live in that dispensation. We live in that time when we will partake, when we will share not only of the double portion but of the unlimited portion of what God's Spirit will pour out in the last days. Amen? Amen. And so do not think of yourself as somebody who is young Amen. Ten years old pa lang ako. May magagawa ba ako? I'm just 13 years old. I just in high school. I have not even finished high school. I have no degree. I have no education. Can I be used by God? Hey, this young girl in Naaman's household, she was a slave, a servant, but she did not look at herself as somebody who is very low, as somebody who is pitiful, somebody who is very low in stature, because 
wala po sa estado, sa estado yan eh, kundi nasa calling mo yan. Alam ng babaeng ito that he was put in there for a purpose. He was put in Naaman's household for a purpose. Just like Joseph, when he went to Egypt, amen, he was separated from his family. But Joseph knew that there is no accident in God. Lahat ng bagay according to the plan of God. And that if you just, you know, open your heart and believe that God has a purpose for you, then God will do His great and mighty plan for you. Just like in the life of Joseph. He became a prisoner. He was sold as a slave. But in the end, his great destiny is to become the feeder of the world. And Joseph knew that. He fulfilled his destiny. So instead of wallowing, bakit ako nandito sa preso? Bakit ako nakakulong? Bakit ako isinangla ng aking mga kapatid? Ibinenta? Bakit ako papatayin ng aking mga kapatid? Bakit? Bakit? That was, you know, what happened to him in reality, but Joseph did not complain. Amen? Siya po ay uh, tinanggap niya yung kanyang kapalaran at ang kanyang kapalaran ay hinayaan niyang mag-roll out ayon sa plano ng Diyos sa kanyang buhay. At ganun din po sa atin. Huwag po nating uh, tingnan yung ating uh, sarili at kalalagayan na mahina, walang magagawa, sapagkat meron po tayong magagawa dahil tayo po ang pinili ng Diyos. Amen? Bakit hindi sila? Eh sila nga yung merong mga may pinag-aralan. Sila nga yung mga galing. Sila nga yung mga merong ng, uh, mga, mga lugar sa lipunan. Bakit sila? Bakit ako? Ako yung isang ordinaryong babae lamang, ordinaryong lalaki lamang, mahina ako. Ako yung isang alipin lamang. Wala akong galing, wala akong talento, wala akong skills. Bakit ako? Ikaw na nga. <laughs> Amen. Kagaya ng babaeng ito sa, sa household ni Naaman, uh, she knew that her purpose was to be the instrument for Naaman to be cured of leprosy. And he gave out the message. I know a prophet. His name is Elisha. He lives in Samaria. And it is in Israel, my hometown, my land, my people. Amen. Hindi po kinalimutan ng babaeng ito ang kanyang identity saan man siya napunta. Hindi niya kinalimutan Israelita siya. Hindi niya kinalimutan na siya ay anak ng Diyos. Hindi niya kinalimutan na siya ay pinili ng Diyos. Kaya naman sa gitna ng kanyang kalalagayan bilang isang alipin, in the midst of her slavery, in the midst of her exile, she did not forget that she has a purpose to fulfill in that land. And in this case, to be the mouthpiece of God, to, to point out Naaman to his miracle, to his salvation. Amen? So, ano po ang sabi sa verse 4? If we will continue, Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. Pagkarinig po ni Naaman, humunta agad siya sa hari. Hindi niya question yung credibility ng batang ito. Hindi niya po sinabing, sino ka ba? Ano ka nga dito? Eh, katulong ka lang dito ah. Ano yung credibilidad mo para sabihin, pumunta ako dito at doon ako magpunta at doon magkakaroon ng kagalingan ang aking ketong. <laughs> Naman did not question the integrity of this girl. Amen? Because this girl was speaking in anointing and authority. So that when Naaman received the message, he obeyed. Siya po ay sumunod. Pumunta siya sa hari. Nagpaalam siya. Kasi, sasakabilang bakod siya eh. Pupunta siya sa Israel. Kaaway nila. Kaya siya po ay nagpaalam. Tinento niya sa kanyang hari. Ang sabi niya, meron pong uh, sinabi yung aking uh, alipin na doon sa dako ng Israel, sa Samaria, ay merong uh, nagpapagaling ng aking ketong. At alo po ang sabi ng verse 5. By all means, go. Wala nang tseche bureche Wala nang mga question-question. Hindi po sinabi ng hari, bakit ka pupunta doon? Eh, mga kalaban natin yun eh. Mga Israelita yun, bakit ka pupunta doon? Di ba? Hindi. Everything was just flowing. Kapag nasa kalooban ka ng Diyos, walang kahirap-hirap. Di ba? Kapag nasa kalooban ka ng Diyos, lahat nangyayari nagaganap ng smooth. Amen? Walang bulilyaso. Alam mo, naka nasa kalooban ka ng Diyos. Amen? At uh, ganyan po ang nangyayari dito. Sabi sa verse 5, By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. Hmm, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. Sabi pa niya, sige, i-endorso pa kita, susulat pa ako. 
Ibigay mo ito sa hari na binibigyan kita ng pahintulot na ikaw ay pumunta sa hari. Okay. So, Naaman left taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. Meron siyang mga daladalang regalo at pumunta at naglakbay siya. Saan? Patungong Israel. Sa lupang kanilang uh, kalaban. Mortal na kaaway. Kapag ikaw ay desperado sa buhay, lahat susuungin mo, di ba? Kahit panganib, kahit kalaban mo. Susuungin mo, desperado mo eh, kailangan mong gumaling, meron kang ketong. And this man, Naaman, was a leper. And there are two kinds of leprosy that this man have. Kawawa talaga siya, meron siyang physical leprosy, meron pa siyang spiritual leprosy. Anong ibig sabihin nun? May sakit siya sa katawan, sa kanyang katawan, meron pa siyang sakit sa kanyang espiritu sapagkat si Naaman po ay kagaya ng kanyang mga kababayang sumasamba sa false god, sumasamba sa peking Diyos Diyosan. Ang pangalan ay si Rimon. He was the god, the false god of the Syrians of Aram. Si, si Rimon po yung kanilang Diyos Diyosan. Yun yung kanilang sinasamba, inaalayan, pinag pina, gawa ng malaking estatwa sa Damascus at yun ang kanilang in, inaalayan at yun po ang ginagawa ni Naaman so this man is not only physically a leper but also spiritually a leper because he does not know the one and only true living God he was worshipping a false god by the name of Rimon and it is, but he is a good man amen, meron po yung mga taong mababait eh, magagaling di ba Pero, lost, mali, parang sinaaman. And sometimes God honors that. You know, God honors your goodness. Kulang na lang sa'yo yung kaligtasan mo eh. Yung, yung, uh, yung faith mo kay Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi kung titingnan mo yung resume mo, magaling kang tao. Mabait kang tao. Walang maipupula sa'yo. You're almost perfect. There's only one missing. And that is the one and only true living God in your life. And that's exactly the case of naaman. If you look at his resume, whoa, it's very impressive. Amen? He's a commander. He is a right hand of the army of Syria. Everything was just going perfect and well. Except for one thing. Except for two things. Amen? He is a leper. He has leprosy. And he is spiritually ignorant of the one and only true living God. But God saw that. Amen? Nakita ng Diyos yan. Kaya isang araw, Ipinave ng Lord ang way for him to be able to, you know, reach his, uh, his, uh, what he has been achieving for, and that is, you know, healing from his leprosy. So, siya po yung naglakbat. Pumunta siya doon sa Israel. So, verse 6. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. Sino po yung inadresan ng letter? Yung king of Israel. By, in this case, it's, his name is Jehoram. The king of Israel, Jehoram. And uh, he was the one who received the letter. At, and this king was... Huh? Sandali, anong nangyayari? Ano... Sabi niya sa verse 7, As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? Oh, see how he is trying to pick a fight with me. Amen. This king does not understand. Hindi niya naiintindihan. Anong nangyayari? Meron ba akong kakayanang magpagaling ng ketong? Bakit sa akin ipinadala to? O, oh, naghahamon yata ng gera itong haring ito ng Aram. Amen? This king does not know what is happening because he knows that he cannot cure Naaman's leprosy. But he was sent there. And he was sent to the wrong place. And he was sent to the wrong person. Sometimes, many times, we Filipinos, we seek that one and true living God, but we always go to the wrong people and wrong places. Pumupo, meron tayong paghahangad eh, nahanapin ang katotohanan. 
Meron tayong paghahangad na hanapin ang uh, totoong Diyos. Pero madalas, pumupunta tayo sa mga maling lugar at mga maling tao. We go to wrong places, wrong churches, wrong doctrines, wrong teachers, wrong, wrong, wrong. Just like Naaman, he was sent to the wrong place and to the wrong person. There was not even a mention of Elijah in the letter. Amen? Whereas it was very clear, the young girl mentioned Elisha. And the young girl mentioned Samaria. But they missed on that. And many times in our lives, we miss on the blessing. We missed on the miracle. We missed on the opportunity. Because we do not understand the will of God. We always go to the wrong people. We always go to the wrong places. And Naaman exactly was like that. Napaka clear ng instruction ng young girl. There's a prophet. His name is Elisha. Saan siya pumunta? Sa king, kay Jehoram. Sabi ni Jehoram, What? Am I God that I can cure leprosy now? I thought I was a king. <laughs> Hindi ako doktor. Bakit sa akin ka pumupunta? And so, ang, uh, ang, ang naging reaction po ni Jehoram is that, gusto yata nito ng away. Gera na naman. Yun po yung kanyang interpretation. Amen? Nakukuha niyo po ba ako? There was just this confusion because nobody understands the will of God. Amen? So, Elisha came into the picture because in verse 8, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this messenger, Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. And so, si Elisha po ay uh, pumasok sa eksena para solusyonan ang problema sapagkat there is an impending war and uh, this uh, the king instead of uh, saying wait wait a minute sa halip ng hari ay sabihin sana sandali baka hindi ako hinahanap mo baka si Elisha hinahanap mo instead of sending him to Elisha this king was trembling in fear this king was looking at the negative things that are going to happen oh magkakaroon ng gera nagahamon Ito yata ay pinadala niya si Naaman para hamunin ako sa war. Amen? So, there's this confusion everywhere. But then, Elisha just came into the picture and said, Send him to me. Amen? Send him to me. So, you were, you were sent into the wrong place. Elisha said, This is the right place. In my household. In my territory. In my land. I live in Samaria and I am the prophet of God. Ako ang makakapagaling uh, sa'yo. And so, as you can remember, na, uh, the servant girl in Naaman's household was very specific. He mentioned Elisha. He mentioned uh, Samaria. But nobody got it right. Amen? Hindi na, hindi na nakuha ng tama. Pagka minsan sa buhay natin, Napaka-specific ng Diyos sa kanyang instruction sa atin, pero hindi natin makuha. Hindi, sapagkat hindi tayo nakikinig. And so, eventually, napupunta tayo sa mga maling lugar, mga maling tao, maling uh, sirkomstansya ng buhay because we are not listening intently. And that's exactly what happened to Naaman. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, Paul was very adamant when he said people go to the wrong teachers and they accept the wrong doctrines and false teachings because they only want to hear what they want to hear they don't want to hear what god wants to tell them amen so so second timothy 4 3 to 4 people are like that just like naaman they go to the wrong place when it comes to the spiritual things he has nothing to do with that. The king has nothing to do with the things of the spirit. And so, Elijah, Elisha, Elisha came into the picture. In verse 9, dumating na po si Naaman. 
So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Verse 10, Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. So pumunta na po si Elisha because Elisha, I see uh, Naaman because Elisha sent for him. I am the one you are looking for. I am the prophet of Israel. So you have to come to me. And so Elisha, uh, Naaman went with his horses and chariots and right at Elisha's door, he was there. Elisha sent the message. It's, this is the message. Go, wash yourself seven times in Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Yung po yung specific, simple instruction. Mahilap ba intindihin yun? Umayo ka. You dip yourself into the river Jordan seven times. That's the instruction. And verse 11, Naaman, how did he respond? Naaman said, he went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Naaman, before going to Elisha's house, has already a preconceived idea. Naiimagine na niya yung mangyayari. Lalabas si Elisha. Papatungan ako. Manginginig-nginig pa. Pwedeng meron pang mga thunders and lightnings. Spectacular ang mga pangyayari. That was what is in his mind. But it was totally unexpected when he heard the instruction, Go wash yourself in the river Jordan. And then, verse 12, Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he tuned and went off in rage. Amen? Nagalit po siya. Ayaw niya. Mahirap bang intindihin yung instruction ni Elijah? Hindi. The instruction was plain and simple. You, it's not an idiom. It's not something that has a hidden meaning. It's very literal. Literal. You go and wash yourself in the Jordan River. But Naaman was not up to it. Sabi ni Naaman, Ganun lang yun? Ganun lang yun? That's it? And he was not willing to accept. Why? Sometimes God's instructions are very simple and plain. But it is the simple and plain that it's very difficult for us to understand. It's too simple that we cannot accept it. It's too simple that we cannot believe it. And so what do we do? We complicate it. Pinapahirap natin. Kagaya ng plan of salvation ng Panginoon. He was sent by His Father, God the Father, the world, that whoever believes in Him, that if we put our faith in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross, we will inherit eternal life. But we cannot believe that. Amen? That simple, that plain, ganun lang yun, kasimple. Kailangan gumawa tayo ng penance, ng sacrament. Kinakailangan paluin natin yung sarili natin pag mahal na araw. O tayo rin ay mag-carry ng cross. Amen? We try to we try to complicate what God has already laid out as His simple plan for us. Just like Naaman. It was very plain and simple. Go and wash yourself in the river of Jordan. Pero hindi po niya matanggap. He could not accept it. Why? Because he said, Meron pang mas magandang, uh, meron pang mas magandang uh, river. Bakit doon sa Jordan? Because Jordan is not so, you know, maybe, it's, it's not as beautiful as a river as the rivers in Damascus. The Abana and Farfar. 
minsan sa buhay natin, pinipili natin eh. Ito ang sabi ng Diyos, meron tayong sariling gusto. Meron tayong mga sariling na abana, mas maganda dun. Amen? At sabi po ni Naaman, that's it. Hindi po niya matanggap. And sometimes we missed on God's blessing in our lives because of our pride. Because of our pride. Amen? Hindi natin matanggap na tayo ay pupunta sa isang lowly, dirty river Jordan. Hindi po natin matanggap na yun lamang po ang ating pupuntahan. Gusto natin mas maganda, mas malaki. Gusto natin mas, uh, mas perfect. And so we try to complicate the plan of God. We try to complicate the will of God. And so in the end, we miss out on the blessings of God. Amen? Meron pa pong isang uh, pangyayari sa Bible. Sa Acts chapter 2, 37 to 40, when the Ethiopian eunuch was naglalakbay, naka-encounter po nila si Philip the Evangelist. At uh, ang message lang po ng Panginoon ay uh, siya po ay mag-repent. Amen? mag lang po sila. At, uh, ah, no, no, this, this is about uh, Peter preaching about repentance. Ang sabi po ni Peter is, repent and be baptized. His message was so clear and simple, repent and be baptized. God's messages are so plain and simple that because it is very simple, it is very difficult for us to believe and accept it. We have a hard time believing and accepting simple messages because we want to overanalyze things. Amen? Gusto natin lahat ng bagay. Ayaw natin ng simple lang. Gusto natin pagtalunan. Gusto natin magpagdebatehan. Gusto natin mag-argue tayo sa isa't isa. And we have a hard time accepting simple things and simple instructions. God's revelation is very beautiful. Very simple. The revelation of the love of God. You know, when He sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross to save us. But as I have said, just like Naaman, we have difficulty understanding the simple things of God because we try to overanalyze it. Ganyan po ang mga tao ngayon. Nakapasok lang ng seminary. Nakapo, nakapasok lang ng Bible school. Eh, pinipilipit na yung salita ng Diyos. Or kinu-question na ang maraming bagay patungkol sa doktrin ng pananampalataya. At dito po nagsisimula kung bakit marami po ay nagiging false teachers at tumatanggap ng mga false doctrines. Sa sobrang pag-analyze. They over-analyze the word of God. And so, in the end, sila po ay uh, na, napapariwara. So, imagine mo. Okay, sige. 